when everyone is talking about the love of God and God loves me just as I am, how would you respond? The kingdom of God is not Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. I think there are few things more dangerous than preachers out there preaching that God loves everybody unconditionally, because the message that is heard by the people who hear that is, there are no conditions, I can continue to live just as I'm living in full rebellion against God, and I have nothing to worry about because there aren't any conditions that I have to meet. God loves me unconditionally, I don't have to repent. I don't have to come to Jesus. I don't have to leave my life of sin. Uh, no conditions, no strings attached. God loves me just the way I am. He's glad that I turned out so nicely, and so on. But there is a sense. I've written a book on the love of God, and where I talk about the three ways in which theologians speak about the love of God, God's love of benevolence, where God has a good will towards everybody believers and non-believers, beneficent love of God. God gives benefits to people whether they're believers or not believers. The rain falls on the just as well as on the unjust. But the most important consideration is the love of complacency, not the love of smugness, but what is meant by the love of complacency is the filial love that God has for the redeemed. And that love is directed first to Christ and then to all who are in Christ our elder brother. And that salvific love is not something that God has for everybody unconditionally. And sometimes we close our eyes to what the Bible says frequently about God's posture towards the impenitent. God, the Bible tells us, abhors the wicked. That's strong language. God abhors, detests the wicked who are impenitive. And then people say, well, God loves the sinner. He just hates the sin. But He doesn't send the sin to hell. He sends the sinner there. And so this is very dangerous stuff when we tell people God loves you unconditionally. You know, so we have to do it from a biblical perspective rather than trying to change the biblical character of God. God is angry every day against the wicked, and justly so. And His every impenitent sinner is exposed every second to the rage, the fury of God's wrath, as Paul tells us in Romans 1.18 and following. And <clears throat> but again, like you said earlier, there's no understanding of the good news apart from the bad news. Christ came into the world that was already under the universal indictment for rejecting God the Father, for living in a, uh, a sense where the clear revelation of God, as you've pointed out, Steve, was so made manifest to every human being, but our nature is so fallen that we don't want God in our thinking, we don't want God in our minds, and we want so much to win people to Christ that we'll do everything we can to hide from them the reality of the wrath of God. We don't tell them that every moment that they refuse to repent, that they are heaping up wrath, Steve, <laughs> against <laughs> the day of wrath. Yeah. Um, and, and, but people aren't afraid of the wrath of God. And it's because we're out there telling them, you don't have to be afraid of God because God is so nice and, he, and it's Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. It takes, it takes the terror out of it. Uh, knowing the terror of the Lord, Paul says, we persuade men. Uh, it's a fearful thing, a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Uh, the, that, that is, preaching that God loves you unconditionally is the wrong message. The sinner needs to be terrified about his condition. He doesn't need to feel comfortable in the fact that he's turned out so well, as R.C. put it. You know, just in the last year, John, I've had two guys come into membership in our church as adults, baptized as adults, by the way, <laughs> who in their testimony… 
Their testimony is that what drove them to the gospel was they realized that they were on their way to hell. Yeah. And that's uh, scared them, literally scared them the hell out of them. <laughs> right? Yeah, and rightly so. Yeah.